Without local police and other government agents who are there to keep us safe and protect us, who would steal our hard-earned cash while we're taking a flight or traveling on the highway? Listen to this one. Fly with cash and law enforcement could take it without ever having to prove you did something wrong. We were talking about this in the commercial break. It's happening regularly at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. Channel 2 consumer investigator Justin Gray is here now. So, Justin, it could be a long and expensive process, you found out, to get that money back, even if it's legitimately yours. And, George, that's the wildest part of this whole thing. Not only are law enforcement agencies like DA seizing people's money at Hartsfield-Jackson without a warrant, they're keeping it. Brian Moore Jr. was flying from Atlanta to L.A. to shoot a music video. I had about $8,500 on me. Jerry Johnson was heading to Phoenix with the cash to buy a truck at auction. It was $39,500. Both men left the airport with their cash gone, seized by law enforcement. It's nothing different than being robbed. Somebody come up with your gun and take your money and then walk off. This is a picture a DEA agent snapped of Brian Moore. That's him in the green hair at the gate at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport heading to Los Angeles. They announced we were about to start boarding and I was approached by um, two women. Moore says they asked if he was carrying guns or drugs. He wasn't. They asked about cash, which he did have. I've never been in a situation to where I was being treated as a terrorist or a criminal. Moore says he explained to the DA agents the money was his to pay for his music video from the sale of his grandfather's car he inherited. They put my money in a big Ziploc bag and they told me I was free to go. They were like, you might want to leave or you're going to miss your flight. So what was Moore's mistake here? Number one, he talked to the police. In this case, DEA agents. And number two, he didn't start recording. Keep in mind, Moore has already passed through the unconstitutional blue shirt tyrant TSA checkpoint where they already violated his rights by checking for drugs and guns. And he was about to board the flight when the DEA asked him if he had guns and drugs, which he was already checked for. So DEA didn't just randomly happen to find a guy who just happened to be carrying a large amount of cash. He went through the TSA surveillance apparatus, made his way to his gate. In the meantime, TSA contacted the DEA to let them know, hey, you got a payday waiting for you here. And then DEA swooped in to make the heist. And that's exactly what it was, a heist. Because the government's got what it takes to take what you got, baby. Am I right, guys? Am I right? <laughs> This is Moore's money in the Ziploc. DEA kept the money, but never mentioned anything about a crime. Nobody ever charged you with a crime. I was never charged. You were never convicted like of a crime. Never convicted of a but crime. But they took your money. They took my money. And did not give it back. Did not give it back. It happens every day at airports all across the country, including right here in Atlanta. They don't want to prosecute the person. They just want their money. Dan Alban is an attorney at the Institute for Justice. He fought in courts for years to get open records data from Homeland Security on seizures. That data shows that here at Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson, just one agency, Customs and Border Protection, sees more than $108 million in cash from travelers between 2000 and 2016. These law enforcement agencies get to keep the money that they seize, and they view these seizures as a source of revenue. Jerry Johnson says he never heard from law enforcement again after they walked off with his $39,000 in cash. Nobody ever contacted me. Nobody asked me any questions. I, I never heard nothing from them after they seized my money. That's typical according to the government's own studies. A 2017 DOJ Inspector General review looked at a sample of 100 DEA seizures and found only 44 of those advanced or were even related to a criminal investigation. The same year, a Treasury Inspector General review found 91% of the money seized in cases it looked at was from a legal source. People should be free to travel with their own money. Brian Moore sued to get his money back. It took two years, and he won the case, but legal fees ate up most of his money by the time it was finally over. After about an almost two-year process, I got back a little under $3,000. Now, I don't know about you, but this doesn't look like protecting and serving to me. It looks more like plotting and ambushing. 
This is the injustice system on full display for everyone to see. Even fake stream media is reporting on it and they still do it. As a matter of fact, they just accelerate their efforts in fleecing the masses of our hard earned income. And it's not even like they don't already take it out of our hides through taxes, fines, fees, and citations, but that's not enough. They want to take more. The DEA refused our requests for an interview or even to provide written comment, directing us instead to a page on their website that says DEA, quote, uses forfeiture to attack the financial structure of drug trafficking and money laundering groups worldwide. But Brian Moore is a military veteran and musician. Nobody ever provided any evidence claiming he was trafficking money or drugs. I thought I would at least find out what I did wrong. And, you know, to this day, I still haven't found out what was suspicious about me or what I did that was suspicious. This poor guy and his wife had nearly $42,000 stolen from him that he was going to use to buy a truck for his new business. His name is Emil Woods. He works a construction job and drives tractor trailers. He told his wife one day that he wanted to own his own trucking business. So she worked extra overtime to help him get a truck. After finding some potential trucks in Houston, Emil borrowed $13,000 from his niece and $6,500 from his wife. In total, he brought nearly $42,000 on his road trip to Houston. And he almost made it to Houston when he got pulled over for some benign reason. He was supposedly following too close to a box truck. The cop asked him if he had any drugs in the car or cash. Emil, thinking he was talking to a protector and servant of the people, freely told the cop that he doesn't do drugs, but he revealed that he does have cash. The cop seized $41,680 from Emil. Then he gave him a receipt for the money. He took it and he let him go. And get this, Emil wasn't arrested or charged with any crime. So these hardworking people are producing things that benefit others and then law enforcement agents come along and work hard stealing their hard earned cash. It's infuriating. Okay, just to recap again, what was Emil's two mistakes here? Number one, he didn't pull out his camera and start recording. And number two, he was answering the cop's questions. He dropped his guard. He thought the cop was his friend. Now imagine what would have happened and how things could have been different if Emil had asserted his rights, pulled out his trifold, and told the cop that all his actions would be recorded for the entire world to see. Maybe things would have went down a little bit different. And here's the kicker. The money they initially steal from us through taxes, they invest in third-party companies who help the cops seize even more property in cash. This article from Fox News says, DOJ eyeing Americans like ATMs, spending over six, not million, but billion dollars to aid civil asset forfeitures. The federal government spends billions to identify and seize assets through forfeiture. Down here, it says the Department of Injustice is shelling out more than $6 billion to private companies to manage its asset forfeiture investigations. With law enforcement agents like this, who needs ordinary criminals? Hey, all you run-of-the-mill criminals out there, stop stealing. The government hates competition. Guys, we got to get our heads out of our derrieres, unite, and do something about this. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, share this video, like this video, make this video go viral, because I'm telling you guys, the criminality of the agencies who claim to be protecting and serving us need to be stopped. Remember, freedom is dangerous. It's uncomfortable. It's a little scary at times. But the only thing more uncomfortable and scary is not having freedom. If you want to support the channel further, grab a hard-hitting conversation starting shirt, become a channel member, but whatever you do, know your rights and fight for them at all costs. If you don't, we're going to lose everything. I'll see you in the next video.